Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. We'll let you get settled in just a second here. Welcome to the College Admissions Collaborative Highlighting Engineering and Technology Virtual College Fair. I have a couple of housekeeping items before I turn it over to our presenter. First of all, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphones are off, so our panelists will not be able to see or hear you. Um, secondly, sign up for more sessions. There's still a whole more, another hour of colleges presenting, so we hope that you will sign up for more sessions. This session is also being recorded, so if you miss something and you want to hear a playback, um, you will have the opportunity to, to hear that playback within um, about one week at strivescan.com slash C-A-C-H-E-T. And finally, we know that you're going to have some questions, and so feel free to put any questions in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen at any point. Just make sure that you list your question out so our um, panelists will be able to, to decipher your question. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Clarkson University. Great. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for joining us this evening. I'm just going to quickly move over to my presentation, and we will go ahead and get started. And as Courtney had mentioned, feel free at any time to add your questions down at the bottom in the Q&A. Uh, we will certainly save time at the end for your questions to be answered live this evening. So with that being said, my name is Paige. I am one of about 10 admissions counselors here at Clarkson, and we are located all the way in upstate New York. So I always like to share this picture. It's my absolute favorite of Clarkson's campus. Um, hopefully you get a bit of a sense of where we are from this picture. We're actually located right outside the Adirondack again in Potsdam, New York. We are one of about four universities and about a 10 minute drive from each other. Uh, so in Potsdam, we have ourselves as well as SUNY Potsdam right down the road. We also have SUNY Canton and St. Lawrence University located in Canton, New York, which is about a 10 minute drive from us. So we actually have a partnership with all of the colleges. Uh, we call it the Associated Colleges. So for us being a very STEM heavy university, if you're ever interested in taking a foreign language class or a music course, um, a fine arts course, for example, you can do that um, and take one at one of those three colleges per semester. It's covered under your tuition. So with that being said, again, us being right outside the Adirondack Mountains, you can see the beautiful uh, Racket River actually at the bottom flows right alongside our campus. You really get that sense of the outdoors at Clarkson. Um, we have two really big clubs at Clarkson, the Outing Club and the Ski Club. We'll talk about those a little bit more later, uh, but you can really get a sense of why that's so popular for us. Uh, so just to put you on the map, we are about a half hour or an hour right outside the Adirondacks, about an hour and a half from Lake Placid. Um, you might remember that um, hearing your parents talk about the Winter Games in the 1980s. Uh, we're also about an hour and a half to two hours south of Montreal and Ottawa. So we get a lot of students that really love to come up to us and be part of the best of both worlds. Um, again, being a short drive from Canada, um, I think is a great benefit for our students as well, getting some additional um, um, types of culture as well as being able to enjoy some of the NHL hockey teams because for us hockey is a really big part of our campus culture too. So with all of that being said, we are a smaller private four-year university. We have a total of about 3,300 students on our campus. That is undergraduate students and we also have about 1,100 graduate students on our campus. So we offer four-year undergrad programs. We also offer master's PhD programs as well. Um, we have a total of 270 undergraduate professors. Every single class that you take at Clarkson will have a faculty member in the classroom, though you may have some additional assistance in the classroom with some TAs, which is really helpful when it comes to uh, finding additional resources for some of your classes. And that leaves us with an average ratio of student to professor student to professor rather of 13 to one. Um, but I will say for a lot of your classes that you start out with, most of our majors will require a Chem 1 course, Calc 1, Physics 1. You may experience some classes in your first semester closer to about 80 or 100 to one. But within those classes that are larger, we do break those down into smaller discussion-based courses. So you will have closer to around 25 to one in every classroom. And that's pretty average for most of our majors. 
So here we will get into the application process. I'm not sure where everybody is on their uh, scale in terms of what you're looking at. If this is your first um, presentation ever, um, this is very exciting and new. Uh, you may be in your senior year and still trying to figure out some last minute colleges to apply to. So with that being said, every single year, our decision deadline um, for your application is January 15th for regular decision and early decision, which is binding, is December 1st. Um, again, we are still considering applications for seniors with everything going on this year. Uh, we want to be certainly as accommodating as possible. So I'll have my email address at the end, um, especially if that is the case for you. With that being said, we always require your school to send in your official transcript as well as two letters of recommendation. This past year was our first year being test optional for your SATs or your ACTs, and we are extending that into the fall of 2022. Uh, we do that because at Clarkson, everything is always very personalized. And again, with everything going on in our current climate continuing on, we just want to make sure that our students are setting themselves up for the best possible application to submit. Um, with that being said, this being our first year being test optional, we did not see any kind of negative impact in terms of um, applications as well as in terms of receiving merit scholarships. So that's a really big question that we received a lot this year. Um, and again, we did not see any kind of negative impact on your financial aid awards, which was really great to see that. Um, and with that being said, we will automatically consider you for merit scholarships, about 86% of those. And then we do have some specialty scholarships on our website. Um, with that being said, a lot of those will align with those same decision deadlines. So just note those two big days for us. Again, January 15th, your application and all those additional scholarships will be due if you're applying regular decision. For early decision, again, which is a binding decision, everything's due by December 1st. And with that said, we do also accept the FAFSA. Um, we don't take the CSS profile, so there's just that one additional form to fill out for any federal aid. Um, and with that being said as well, again, at Clarkson, we really personalize things. So the FAFSA doesn't always capture all of your family's financial situations. That's what your admissions counselor is for, like myself, uh, to really make sure that we're capturing all that information, taking special circumstances into consideration and so forth. So enough about our applications. I always joke that that's one of the uh, more dry sides or dry slides rather on my presentation, but very important still to go over. Uh, so now we'll get into our really fun undergraduate programs. And here we have, uh, we call him Dr. Jim. He's our chem teacher and he is phenomenal. Most of you, if you end up attending Clarkson, will probably take at least one class with him. It's really fun. You can also check out some of his videos on YouTube for fun too. Uh, so we have the School of Arts and Sciences. It's one of five different schools at Clarkson, and that's what we'll start out with here. So we are a very STEM heavy school, but not STEM exclusive. So you'll see in our School of Arts and Sciences, some of the pure sciences like biology, chemistry, um, computer science, physics, and so forth. Um, we also have some more of our liberal arts programs listed here, like our history programs, humanities, and the like. Um, with the Arts and Sciences School, it's actually very easy to combine majors, which is really great. Um, at Clarkson, we really do push our students to expand um, all of their opportunities. And a great way to do that is oftentimes by adding in a second major or minors and concentration. So a lot of these combine very easily together. One thing to note as well is that all of our programs require our students to complete at least one internship or co-op or some type of research. So that is again a requirement of every single major that you'll see on this list. Here we have the Ray School of Business. Um, it is a nationally ranked school and uh, one that I'm actually very happy to be a part of um, on the graduate side of things. Um, and again, I've really enjoyed my experience um, in that path as well. So any questions specifically about business, I, I would love to answer too. Um, you'll see here that we don't have any majors listed, just like pure marketing programs or pure finance programs. Again, we do that to really expand your opportunities and also to expand the classes that you're taking while you're at Clarkson to really make sure that you're best able to market yourself to a wide variety of companies and programs uh, going out of Clarkson in your undergrad years. So you'll see programs like financial information and analysis, where you'll be taking finance courses, accounting courses, economics courses, again, to really help you broaden your opportunities upon graduation. 
entrepreneurship is huge at Clarkson. We actually have a brand new scholarship that is for our Clarkson Ignite program. It's a launch pad for a lot of our startup companies. And with that being said, we're now able to award up to 10 full tuition scholarships as part of the Clarkson Ignite program. Uh, so that's something that's very exciting and very new to us. Uh, we also have engineering and management. It's consistently our number two or number three largest major every single year. And aside from our um, and you'll see this later on, very happy to say we have a consistent 97% placement rate upon graduation. Um, we just had that for our class of 2020 as well. Uh, but engineering and management is consistently 100% placement. It's a really phenomenal program, fully combines the School of Engineering and the School of Business, um, dual accredited program, and again, 100% placement coming out of that. So a lot of opportunities for our students. One thing I'll note about the School of Business as well is in addition to completing some type of internship or co-op, it is required to complete some type of global experience. Most students will do that through a study abroad semester. Um, so you'll see a little bit about that later on as well. Um, but you can also do that through some two week summer uh, excursions or we also now offer winter J term programs. We are, I would say, most well known for our School of Engineering, so that might be what most of you are here for this evening. About 60% of our students are coming to Clarkson for our engineering programs. Um, after that, I would say some of our bigger programs are definitely the School of Business, Computer Science, and we'll get to our pre-health program shortly as well. Um, with that being said, we have all of our majors listed here, ranging from aeronautical, uh, mechanical engineering, which is our biggest major on campus, uh, civil and chemical engineering, as well as software engineering are really huge for us too. Um, a lot of these you can actually very easily double major in as well, even though the curriculum is quite a bit more structured for the School of Engineering. It's very easy, for example, to double major in mechanical and aeronautical. We get a lot of dual uh, degree students going into civil and environmental, so that's very popular for us. And again, a lot of different minors and concentrations. So if you ever are interested, say, specifically in adding a robotics concentration or something with sustainability, there's all those different options for you at Clarkson to, again, broaden your options, but also add in some more specific interests along the way. With that being said, we don't allow students coming in to declare any minors or concentrations right off. So you will come in um, adding in your major and then again going from there, usually meeting with your advisor about halfway through your first semester to add in some more of those specialty programs. And so finally, we'll end with our Institute for a Sustainable Environment. Um, it does house actually three different programs. Um, environmental engineering actually somewhat falls under the ISC as well, um, including the environmental health science and environmental science and policy programs. And again, lots of different minors and concentrations to add into that. We always highlight our interdisciplinary programs too. Um, so we get a lot of students coming in for biology or chemistry. Um, they may not have heard of biomolecular science where you're really drilling down to more of that molecular level. Um, that is something that we get a lot of students that will transfer into about, um, I'd say um, during their second semester or their second year at Clarkson. Um, and there's a lot of really great research opportunities with that program. Uh, digital arts and sciences is also something that's a bit unique to us and a, a lot of times I feel like it's a little bit overlooked. It's a phenomenal program. Um, all of our students, again, are required to complete some type of professional experience. And one of the more popular ones a couple of years ago is our communications uh, chair. He actually put together a documentary. It was uh, it went international. He went to international premieres for it, and it was put together and edited by Clarkson students only, which was really cool to see. Um, again, engineering and management is a dual program, half in the School of Engineering, half in the School of Business. And we do have other interdisciplinary programs like the Liberal Arts and Business um, dual interest program as well. So one other thing that I'll point out, again, our pre-health programs are really popular, specifically pre-occupational therapy, pre-physical therapy, and pre-physician's assistant. And that's because we also offer those at the graduate level. Um, one very exciting announcement is that we just launched direct entry for all of those programs going into the graduate level at Clarkson. So we're now able to award anywhere from 15 to 30 spots for each of those programs, um, again, as do or direct entry um, immediately upon your undergrad acceptance. We're also able to award additional scholarships for that, which is really exciting and helps to cut down the cost even at the graduate level with um, additional graduate scholarships offered immediately. 
pre-law and pre-medicine can honestly, um, same as all these pre-advising programs, be added into any major, um, including pre-dentistry, pre-veterinary, um, again, can be added to anything. We have students going into those from um, history backgrounds, physics backgrounds, mechanical engineering. You can really declare whatever major you want and add in pre-advising. And whatever track you add on, you get a second advisor that makes sure that regardless of that program, you're completing all of your prerequisites, you're completing all of your shadowing that may be required for some of those programs to make sure that you're able to go right on to those graduate programs upon um, leaving Clarkson in our undergrad. And if you're still exploring, that is perfectly fine. We actually offer five different tracks that you can declare um, upon applying to Clarkson, and you can honestly spend your first entire year in these tracks. So we have everything from engineering studies. So if you're not exactly sure what major you want to go into in engineering, this is a great way to start off, and you actually get more specific hands-on advising with these programs to really dive into what is it that you're interested in, what can we get you into in terms of internships, co-ops, maybe some additional courses to really develop what your interest is in that full first year. Um, we have, again, business studies, uh, liberal studies, science studies, and one that I always shout out is university studies, which is what we call undecided or undeclared at Clarkson, and that, again, gives you a full first year to explore everything at Clarkson. Um, they have phenomenal, phenomenal advising in that program. Um, I'm a big fan of one of their advisors, um, not got to throw everything out there, but her name is Kathy Avedikian. She's, again, phenomenal. You can search her on our website. Um, she is great to talk to, even if you're just starting to get interested in Clarkson and really helps you again in that full first year to develop your interests. So again, our professional experiences, at least one of these is required before graduating. Study abroad is only required for the School of Business, but it's certainly an option for every single student and every major at Clarkson. Uh, my big advice to students is when they get to Clarkson, again, everything's very personalized. Make appointments early on with the Career Center as well as the International Center, especially if you're interested in study abroad. The International Center is great at helping you try to see um, right from the get-go where are some of the best partner universities that you could go to for your major and really helping you to develop a plan early on to make sure that fits well into your schedule. Um, same thing with the Career Center. I highly recommend if you attend Clarkson, meet with them in the first couple of weeks. They offer a lot of really fantastic resources and they do the same thing as our admissions office where they'll sit down with you in a one-on-one -on -one setting um, really to, again, uncover what it is you're interested in. And even if you don't know for sure what exactly your interest is, uh, that is what they're there for. They're in a award-winning department. They're um, absolutely phenomenal in helping you. Some other professional experiences I always throw in here are some of our uh, experiences that fall outside of these general categories. Um, one that I always mention, again, being right outside the Adirondacks, we have something called the Adirondack Semester. Um, you can always look that up on YouTube as well. Um, there's a lot of great information there as well as on our website. Um, the Adirondack Semester, we select about 10 to 12 students each fall, and they go on an excursion into the Adirondacks. Um, our Clarkson faculty go with them as well. And again, it's a full immersion semester. So you stay on Paul Smith's campus in Saranac Lake, right in the heart of the Adirondacks and work on a research project that you end up presenting at the end of that semester, along with taking your courses there. For our biomolecular science students, we also offer a summer research opportunity at the Trudeau Institute, which is also located in Saranac Lake. That is a phenomenal opportunity. They do a lot of immunization research and they were actually heavily involved with research recently for um, the COVID-19 vaccine, which was really interesting and very relevant to see. So we'll have some slides here that throw out some general information. I don't like to um, spend a lot of time on the, um, the facts um, that you'll see here in our presentation, but a big thing that I always talk to students about is the return on investment that you get out of your college. So that's a big thing. Again, no matter where you are in the college search process, definitely take some time to see what is it that you're getting out of the college for what you're paying into the college. And we are consistently um, having our students be the highest er earners in terms of internships, co-ops, and research. Um, again, the Career Center is really phenomenal and a huge part of helping our students find those professional experiences. Uh, they fully vet every company that we work with. There's smaller local companies. There's very large um, national and international companies that we work with for our students. And again, we make sure that every single one of our internships and co-ops really allows you to develop your skills there. So you're not just going on an internship, sitting in a back room and uh, filing 
filing paperwork, you're actually getting that real hands-on experience that you can then add to your resume and market to future employers. Um, with that being said, about 92% of our internships are paid. 100% um, of our co-ops are always paid. If this is the first time you're hearing of a co-op, it is essentially a full-time work experience where you leave our campus in the spring, you pause on taking your courses, and you work with a company for about an eight-month period, um, which is really great, helps you to get a lot of experience. Um, and again, those are 100% fully paid positions, oftentimes paid very well. Um, the Career Center is also helpful with co-ops and helping you find uh, apartments if you end up doing a co-op away from from where you normally live um, and finding a lot of resources while you're away from home too. So again, just some samples here of companies that employ our co-op students. Again, you'll see some smaller companies. You'll see some that you uh, may know very well. General Electric is a really big partner of Clarkson. Um, same thing, Procter & Gamble, um, Estee Lauder, Johnson & Johnson. So you're seeing a lot of big names here that our students partner with. Um, and again, you know, go to year after year for co-op experiences. So I will say that the Career Center, they're also there to put on different um, productions like our two career fairs every year. Um, the fall career fair usually averages around 180 to 200 employers. The spring is a little bit smaller. Again, it gets a bit colder up here in upstate New York. Um, so a lot of times we'll average about 150 or so employers in the spring. My big advice to students, again, for Clarkson, if you ultimately decide to attend, go to the career fair immediately. Um, we do have, again, two every year, uh, but I really recommend bring a uh, business professional suit with you, uh, go to the career fair, even if it's just to walk around. And I really encourage you, get out of your shell a little bit, talk to some of the companies. That is a lot of times how our students are securing their internships, is they'll walk up to a company, they might print out some resumes that the career center will help them to prepare in advance, um, and just talk to them, ask them questions, see if it's something that you're interested in. Uh, first of all, to see if it's a good fit for you. Um, and again, a lot of times that turns into on the spot interviews or turns into scheduling an interview. And again, that's how a lot of our students secure their first uh, internship or their first co op experience. Um, with that being said, the Career Center is also there for a lot of soft skill building. So again, they're there to meet with to actually go over your resumes. They'll host different events that they call Resumania, which I think is really funny. Um, so they will sit down with you and they'll go over your resume and make sure that it's more marketable and presentable for these types of events. Um, they'll also do things like mock interview nights, which is really great and again helps you to build up those soft skills so that you're prepared to go out into your career. So here we'll again see just some of the facts about Clarkson. Um, again, I won't spend too much time on this, but something that I do really want to boast about is we did get our class of 2020 numbers in again. Um, we're still at 97%, which again, I think is just really phenomenal and speaks highly of how Clarkson students are prepared to go out into their field. Um, again, entrepreneurship is huge for us. Uh, we have a center called Clarkson Ignite. Um, you may hear a little bit more about that if you attend some of our other virtual events, but again, they're really a hub in the center of campus to help our students launch their um, their potential companies. And so one in five of our students are coming out, starting up their own company or going into more of those senior management roles. So again, preparing our students very well. And again, uh, student or study abroad rather is required for the School of Business, but again, an option for every single major. So you're seeing here just a sample listing of countries where our students will go and study abroad. Um, a, a little joke that I like to throw in here is that we are on every single continent except for Antarctica, but trust me, if you come to Clarkson in the winter, um, you, you won't need to go to Antarctica, so it, it does get a little bit colder up here. Um, with that being said, again, you're seeing kind of some dots around the world where our students will go and study abroad. Um, really kind of varies by major where we see our students study abroad. So again, you know, just for example, we see a lot of our engineering students, especially software engineering, computer engineering, going to some countries in Asia. Um, Europe is, of course, a very popular destination. Uh, so a lot of ways to see the world. Um, one other thing that I'll talk about in part of our student life um, which here you're seeing uh, an image of our students at our hockey games. Again, that's really a big part of our campus culture. Um, a lot, a lot of fun. Um, but with that being said, another great way to see the world is by volunteering. We actually have chapters of Doctors Without Borders as well as Engineers Without Borders. So there's a lot of service opportunities that you can really get into, again, to go out and study um, or go see the world and perhaps help with um, sustainability efforts. Um, 
one other thing I forgot to mention is more aligned with our Institute for a Sustainable Environment. There's also opportunities to do research abroad in the summers. We actually have a partnership with the University of Uganda where we go and we'll select about 10 students each summer to go with our ISE faculty um, and help to do some carbon offsetting um, by reforesting in Uganda. And again, it, it kind of pays us back in terms of carbon offsets too. Um, very sustainable campus. And I hope that you'll see that if you ever um, come onto campus for a tour or take a virtual tour, we're actually consistently named one of the nation's greenest campuses. Um, so it's really nice to be a part of that and sustainability too. Um, so with that being said, the last time I looked at our nightlife website, um, we have about 220 different clubs to join. So again, a lot in terms of volunteering, um, service opportunities. Uh, we actually have our own student run EMT service that you're seeing under volunteering as well. With that being said, again, um, our athletics under the Golden Knights, we have 20 different athletic teams. Um, two of those are Division One, and that's our, um, I'm sure it's a surprise, the men's and women's ice hockey teams. We also have 18 Division Three teams. So if you're ever interested in potentially looking into those and trying out for those teams, we actually have some athletic recruiter forms right on our website. That's the easiest way to get involved in talking to our coaching staff. Outside of that, if you're not wanting to commit fully to a D3 or D1 level, um, lots and lots of opportunities for intramural sports. So even more intramurals than we offer for our D3 teams. Um, you can certainly join things like football. We have badminton, broom ball. Um, we have a rugby team. So you name it, we probably will already have it. Um, if not, I always mention it's very easy to start a club at Clarkson. It usually takes about four or five students, draft up a little contract or a constitution and submit it to our student board. And I would say 99% of the time it will get approved. Um, outside of that, we do have about 10% of our students involved with Greek life on campus. Um, we have tons and tons of leadership opportunities on campus. Um, student government is really popular, um, very heavily involved. Uh, we have a lot of professional societies related to your major. So again, I really also recommend uh, adding some of those into your curriculum um, and into your schedule. I think it's a great way to start networking early on. Our student board also will put together a lot of special events throughout the year. Uh, this year, they were very creative with how they did that. Um, especially as each semester, we were quite a bit more remote in what we could offer for student life early on. Um, and with that being said, they would um, offer a lot of different virtual movie nights, virtual trivia evenings. And then as our semesters progress and we open a little bit more uh, with our reopening plans each semester, they were able to organize things like drive-in movie nights on our Chia Lawn, which was really nice to see too. Um, again, I would say our biggest clubs, definitely the outing club. Uh, they actually, every single year will put on different pre-orientation trips. They're about three-day excursions into the mountains. You can join everything from easy level hiking to more advanced rock climbing. So there's really something for everybody. They are optional trips, but they do always start before our orientation weekend. Um, so just another little thing to look forward to. And then again, our ski club, we're surrounded by a lot of great mountains. They give out discounted passes to Whiteface, which is again in Lake Placid about an hour and a half from us. So a lot of different ways to get involved. Um, one big thing as somebody who went to college, just a word of advice, no matter where you're coming from, um, I even say this to students that live in the town of Potsdam, again, get out of your comfort zone, go and try out for some new clubs, um, for some new intramural clubs, uh, professional organizations and the like. And I think that just as soon as you can kind of get out and um, try to join different things and make new friends is how you are going to build your social circle at Clarkson. Um, I do think it's a very friendly and welcoming campus. Um, I know that I, you will hear that from every single person on our campus, but again, really push you to get out and get involved early on. So with that being said, the first Monday of every semester in the fall, we'll have a huge activities fair where you can go table to table, check out all these different clubs. And then typically the following Tuesday, uh, we'll hold specifically for a volunteer fair. Um, service is really important to us at Clarkson. And so we offer a lot of those community service opportunities. So one other thing that I'll mention is our speed teams. These didn't really get highlighted under student life. Uh, we have 12 different speed teams on campus, everything from the mini Baja that you're seeing here to a robotics team, um, design build fly for a model plane, um, a concrete canoe. I was not an engineering undergrad, so I have no idea how any of those work, but they are serious fun at Clarkson. Um, a lot of those clubs will go to regional competitions. Some of them have made it actually for several years in a row 
to national competitions. So it's a great way to get involved with hands-on activity outside of the classroom. Um, and again, be involved in more of a club setting where you're making friends that way too. Um, we have actually a class that you can take and add on to your first semester if you're interested in any of the speed teams, which by the way, are open to every single major. Um, you don't have to be an engineer to join these clubs. And you'll take a machine shop class that will prepare you to join in these speed teams. And actually something that you can add for fun onto your resume as well. So just a couple minutes left in my presentation and then I'll open up for any questions that you might have in the audience. Um, we do have a lot of resources and I really recommend as you're making that transition from high school to college, um, a lot of times there's a bit of um, a change in the academic level that you're taking. And so sometimes that can throw students off a little bit. Um, I know personally, I'll share that it did with me when I went from high school to college. And so I highly, highly recommend going to our Student Success Center. They have a lot of free resources that you can um, go to and utilize all four years at Clarkson. So Student Success Center, they're in charge of um, tutoring hours. We actually have in our quad area for freshmen, weekly tutoring sessions for our Chem 1 courses, Physics 1 and Calc 1. So those actually meet regularly. But for every single course that you take all four years, there will be tutoring services available. And perhaps you can even become a paid tutor down the line as well. Um, so that is again, all through our Student Success Center. Um, with that being said, our first year advising program, I personally think is uh, one of the best resources on our campus. So again, as you're making that transition, you get assigned your first year. Um, every single person will get an advisor outside of their academic advisor. It could be a faculty member, it could be a staff member that's trained, and they check in with you regularly to make sure that you are doing well on campus and that you're enjoying your time at the end of the day um, and feel that you've made the right choice, that you're making friends. Um, and again, they're also there for you if you ever feel that you're struggling with your classes to help perhaps point you in the right direction if you forget about some of these resources. Um, again, things like tutoring, we have a free writing lab uh, where you can literally bring in a paper and just ask somebody to look it over for you. Um, but again, I think that a lot of those, sometimes they can be a little bit underutilized and I really push students to reach out for those resources. Uh, we also have a diversity and inclusion office that is there um, for students of all backgrounds. Inclusivity is huge at Clarkson and it's a big part of our campus culture and our values. Um, with that being said, we have a lot of clubs uh, related to diversity and inclusion, but they also in their office will host um, events all throughout the year. Again, really promoting inclusivity of all students on campus. Um, if you ever need additional resources, um, additional um, things like documentation, um, we have the Office of Accessibility Services to help you out as well. And one final thing that we just throw in here is test prep. Uh, so again, 97% placement coming out of Clarkson, that includes either going directly into your, um, into your career or perhaps going on to a grad program. So we offer a lot of free um, GRE courses, GMAT courses if you're going on to your MBA um, and so forth. So a lot of great resources for our students. Um, so we'll wrap up here. Um, again, not going to bog you down with all of the different, um, the different data sets here. But one thing that I will say, again, is as you are going forth in your college search, really make that list and see what are you getting out of each college that you're applying to? Are you getting that personalized attention? Um, do you, are you getting the opportunity to complete at least one um, internship or co-op? And for us, again, required, but certainly have a lot of our students that are completing multiple of those opportunities. Um, so with that being said, we will wrap up here. The one final thing that I will say is we are open um, actually for all students um, domestically in the U.S. beginning on Thursday, August 1st. Um, New York State has kind of changed their, uh, their rules and so we've changed accordingly. So if you are interested in setting up an in-person visit, either to meet with an admissions counselor um, and or to go on a tour in person of campus, feel free to call our office. Um, the uh, office phone number is listed below 315-268-6480. You can also visit our website at www.clarkson.edu and schedule a visit that way. Um, on our website, you'll also see a list of all different kinds of virtual events that we have coming up over the next several months. Um, with that being said, I am the liaison for CACHE. I also am one of 10 admissions counselors, so feel free to add my email um, or write that down today, which is pdustin at clarkson.edu. Edu, um, and I would be more than happy to help you after this evening with any questions that you have. 
So with that being said, I will stop my screen here. And I'm not seeing anything in the Q&A at this time. Um, just checking the chat. So I'll leave just a few seconds for anybody who would like to add any um, questions below to the Q&A, or as I said, feel free to email me or give our office a call if you do have any questions. Oh, and not seeing anything, I think that we will probably be safe to wrap up for the evening. Uh, so with that, as I said, feel free, email me at pdustin at clarkson.edu or give our office a call. Again, the number is 315-268-6480. Um, and we will certainly be able to help. Um, very quickly before we wrap up, I do just see one question that was just added, uh, which is if we have any major specific scholarships, which we actually do. So if you go to our website, um, again, we do have a list of specialty scholarships that are all due by a certain date. Um, you can certainly um, check all of those out. We have some specific to engineering, specific to um, STEM uh, focus in general. And again, that Ignite program uh, where we're now able to offer up to 10 scholarships. Um, and as far as um, another question that I am seeing, I'm starting to see some questions added to the Q&A now. Um, as far as how do out-of-state student, uh, out students get to campus, um, that's actually very easy. It kind of depends on where you're coming from. Um, I do work with some students that are out west um, as well in California and in Texas. And a lot of times the easiest way for um, students that are very far away is to fly into Syracuse International Airport, we actually have a Trailways, um, Adirondack Trailways that will take you from the airport right up to our campus. Actually, it delivers you right into our um, hockey arena, which is really nice. So you can just come right to campus from there. Um, that is typically up and running. One thing that I always say at this time of year, though, especially with the pandemic going on, always give them a call to make sure that they are going to Syracuse and coming up to Potsdam. Um, for students on the East Coast, a lot of times it's easy, um, again, depending on how far away to just drive up to our campus. It's a really scenic drive through the Adirondacks. Um, we also do, in a, again, a normal year, have um, a bus that will take students um, after or during their breaks down to New York City. So it makes three stops on its way to New York City, which can be very helpful. Um, we also have a, there's a night board um, that you can find on our website as a current student where a lot of times students will post about being commuters or uh, that they're going home for the weekend. So that's a great way to catch a ride home sometimes as well if you don't bring a car. Um, and just a fun fact, we do allow cars all four years. So I think that answers everything in the Q&A. We can probably stop there. Um, and again, just feel free to reach out if you do have any other questions after this evening. And thank you for attending. It's thank you so much to you and Clarkson University um, audience. Thank you for attending this evening. As you close out, there'll be a quick four question survey. So we do hope that you'll provide us with some feedback. There is more sessions after this um, for one more hour. So we hope that you will go to strivestand.com um, slash C-A-C-H-E-T to sign up to hear from additional institutions. Again, this was recorded and the playback will be available at that website um, that you see on your screen. With that, have a great night, everyone, and we'll see you soon. Good luck in your college search process. Bye-bye.